guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. <gasps> good boys. Good boys. <laughs> Hello. I am Allie Zirkel, and welcome to Husky Homeroom. These are a few of my Alaskan Husky sled dogs. And let's be honest, a lot of people, oops, ask me, how are your dogs, how are they fit enough to run like they do and to race? You have to remember that these dogs, they're top performers. They are, they're Olympic caliber athletes, each one of them. All of the teaching assistants that you've met, you've fallen in love with, each one of them has a chance to make my Iditarod sled dog race team in March. Driver, are you coming back in? He'll be back. <laughs> anyway, it takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of fitness and it takes a healthy body in order to make my Iditarod team. And I'm talking for both my dogs and myself. One of the primary ways that I make sure my dogs stay as healthy as possible, you coming in, buddy? Is that I feed them the very best food and the correct amount of food. Hi, what do you think? Do you want to help me today to talk about and answer two questions? Number one, what food should a husky eat? And number two, how much should a husky eat? At the same time, I mean, let's be honest. Let's look at you and me. Since we're doing our best to keep our dogs healthy and happy, shouldn't we care if we're healthy and happy as well? Before we start our lesson, let's, what do you say, let's take a closer look at two of our teaching assistants that are going to help us today. Okay? Okay. Okay. Well, here they are, up close and personal. Our two teaching assistants today are brother and sister. Now I know they don't look at all alike, but some brothers and sisters don't. They are eight-year-old Alaskan Huskies, and both of them have come across the finish line in Iditarod uh, with a smile on their face and wagging their tail. <laughs> and the reason that I really wanted them to help me today besides their enthusiasm, is that they have some really neat strengths and weaknesses. So let's talk about them real at first. First of all, here we have Chipper. Chipper, as I said, eight-year-old little girl, little puffball, and her strength is that she has an unending amount of energy. I don't know where she gets it. You're probably going to see it for the next 20 minutes. But whether she's running in harness, chewing a bone, chasing her neighbor around, she's got constant energy. Driver, where are you going, buddy? <laughs> her minus, her weakness is that sometimes her neighbors get a little bit annoyed with her never ending energy. You know the kind of person who's always go, go, go? Sometimes they get bothersome. So that's Chipper. Driver, driver. Hi, come here. Hi, let's talk about you. Now here's our big boy. This is Driver, her brother, and he obviously is a boy. Stay here, buddy. <laughs> now Driver, his strength, you can kind of see it. He's incredibly powerful. He's a big boy, isn't he? He's made for pulling up hills and he's great pulling power. <laughs> he's going to argue with me. He doesn't want to cuddle, does he? <laughs> anyway, this really helps the team when we're climbing mountains and we're chugging down the Yukon River. He's got a lot of power. But his weakness is that he's got such a big, strong body that sometimes he's a little bit slow. It takes him a long time, <laughs> excuse me, to get going. And that makes him a little bit slow. So everyone has strengths and everyone has weaknesses. Now, okay, let's get into the heart of this lesson. What do you say? 
let's talk about some basic science. Everyone, dogs, humans, driver, needs food and it's their fuel in order for our internal engines to continue to churn. You know, we talked about a car before and how you put fuel into a car and that's what keeps a gar car going. Well, dogs, as well as human beings, we need food for our fuel. And you and I are the same as dogs. We are burning through fuel all of the time, even when we're sleeping. When we're watching TV, when we're on our iPad, we are still burning through fuel. The big question is what food should a husky eat in order to be the happiest, healthiest dog that he can? What should driver eat? Well, the study of food is actually called nutrition. Since we call it nutrition, buddy, we end up breaking food groups into six categories called nutrients. Nutrition, nutrients. That kind of makes sense, right? And these six nutrients, six of them, dog, are essential. They're essential for life, for you, for me, and for driver. We cannot live without them. The six nutrients are protein, fat, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and water. So first, protein, number one. What do you think, protein, buddy? Driver likes protein. It's used by his body to build muscles, skins, and bones. Protein can also be used as energy so he can run up those mountains. And it's in food sources like fish, eggs, beans, milk, and driver's favorite, meat. So protein is number one. Number two, you like number two also, don't you? Number two is fat. Fat is used primarily as the major storage form of energy in his body. The fats that a dog has eaten that he doesn't end up burning off are actually stored in his body in fat cells. This is his body's way of thinking ahead and saving fat for future use when it might be, food might be a little scarce. So fat is found in food sources like butter and oil, ooh, salmon oil, what do you think? Cod, cod liver oil, fish oil. He's kind of partial to the fishes. So the number three nutrient is carbohydrates. Carbs, they give you energy to burn and to run and to jump and they're, they're quick energy to blink your eyes. It's kind of a quicker burning energy. And some people say that dogs who are carnivores, which means they eat meat, they, they don't really eat as many carbohydrates, but they do have the ability to eat carbohydrates as a form of energy. Carbs, which are normally found in grains like corn, oats, rice, they give us quick energy. They're also in bread, cereal, and pasta. Carbohydrates. So number four, driver, what do you think number four is? Vitamins. Vitamins. So vitamins, all bodies, dogs, people, all bodies need vitamins to stay healthy. And there's a lot of different kinds of vitamins. They're usually named by letters, A, B, C. Vitamin A, driver, what do you think vitamin A does? It protects your eyes and your skin. Vitamin C, you guys have all heard of vitamin C, right? It comes in oranges and citruses. It heals cuts and scratches. It also keeps your teeth and gums healthy. Are your teeth healthy? Can you see your teeth? Oh, they look pretty healthy. <laughs> He's had a lot of vitamin C. Vitamin D, it strengthens your bones. We all need a lot of vitamin D to strengthen our bones. So a lot of 
dogs, they get additional vitamin sources as supplements. You might take a vitamin every single day and dogs in their dog food, they have added vitamins just to make sure that they get enough of that nutrient. Number five, the fifth nutrient is minerals. Once again, all bodies, driver's body, chipper's body, mine, yours, we all need minerals in order to stay healthy. There are a lot of different minerals to variety of food. Some of them you might know are, let's see, potassium. Potassium keeps your muscles working correctly, especially one big muscle, your heart muscle. It helps your heart muscle continue to pump blood throughout your system. And speaking of blood, another mineral is iron that you, you is a nutrient and you need iron in your blood in order to carry oxygen. So minerals are super important. The last nutrient, it's water. Hmm, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Water. Many of us, dogs, people, we don't necessarily consider water all that important. But we should, shouldn't we, driver? Because actually a dog's body a human body, we are made up 80% of water. That's a lot, isn't it? So make sure you get your sixth nutrient, which is water. So those are the six essential nutrients in driver's body and in our food. Now, let's see how much food a husky should eat in order to be happy and healthy. I mean, you think about, let's think, chippy, chippy, let's think about that car again. A car is simple. I mean, my goodness, the gas gauge goes down, you fill it up with fuel. The gas gauge goes down, you fill it up with fuel again. But a dog, that's a little more complicated, isn't it? How do you know when they're empty? Well, number one, we should first talk about how do we measure food? I can say that driver needs, let's see, a small ladle of dog food, two dog biscuits, chipper needs one salmon chew. You don't want a salmon chew? Would you like a cod chew instead? Oh yeah, I'd like a driver want a cod chew? Yes, please. Good boy. So you can say a dog needs two beef biscuits, two salmon chews, a ladle of dog food, but those aren't very specific terms, are they? As far as measuring. How small of a bowl? What size of a dog chew? How big of a piece of cod? All those things are big question marks. So what we need to do is to be able to measure food in a standardized way. What we use to measure food are calories. I know you've heard of calories, right? But what does it really mean? Chippy dippy? What is a calorie? Well, driver, a calorie is a standard measurement around the world. It measures how much energy is in food. When you hear something has 100 calories, that's how much energy driver's body gets out of that food. So 100 calories of fish, what do you think, has the same amount of energy as 100 calories of beef, as 100 calories of broccoli. All three have the same amount of energy. So it's a standardized measurement. Now, calories aren't bad for you. Your body, my body, chipper's body, driver's body, they all need calories to survive. So now that we know that all bodies need calories to survive, you have to understand that, that a body, Mr. Driver here, his body has a calorie master plan. That plan has three main goals. They are number one, 
eat enough calories to survive. Number two, don't eat more calories than you need. And number three, balance those calories in between all the nutrients that we learned. So now that we know a lot more about the nutrients of dog food and a master calorie plan, the simple question is how, how exactly do I feed my dogs? Well, honestly, once we know all that, it's quite simple. What we do is we find a quality manufactured dog food. And quality manufacturing, quality brand dog foods, they actually hire nutritionists, veterinarians, and mathematicians. What they do is they do the science for you. They take into account the six nutrients that you need in your dog food, and then they take into account how to mix them together in order to make a formula that you can use for your dog. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of dogs in the world. We know that. So there's actually a lot of different kinds of formulas. You can find a puppy formula. You can find a senior dog formula. Gosh, you can even find medicinal formulas, allergy formulas. There's a lot of different dog formulas. So you need to know the specifics of your dog. Then what you need to know is how many calories that dog needs to consume the correct amount of calories, but not too many calories. So feeding dogs is really, really not that hard once you have the science of nutrition figured out. Now, as I stand here and look at these dogs, I think, wow, you know, Feeding, feeding dogs is actually not that hard. But what about you and me? What about feeding you and, you and me? How do we go about coming up with the correct nutrition and the healthy food? Because I certainly don't eat prepackaged food the same thing every meal of my life. Do you? I bet you don't. And that's because as human beings... We have choices. If we want to go through the drive through then we do. Hopefully every once in a while, right? So we're done with talking about dog nutrition. We learned about the six nutrients. Are you leaving? We learned about measuring food and how we actually do that. And then we learned about the body's master plan. Consume enough calories don't consume too many calories and make sure they're nutritionally balanced. In the end here, Chipper, there's two things that I really want you to think about for yourself. Number one is you're in charge of what you eat. As I said, everything we eat becomes us. It's really that simple and it's pretty cool. You and I, we have the choice to create a truly amazing body for ourselves. Most importantly, we can have a body that's happy and it's healthy. We might need to learn a little bit more about human nutrition, or we constantly learn about human nutrition because it's changing. But we're lucky because there's lots of interesting internet sites, books, magazines, and people who want to talk about nutrition and teach you about it. And honestly, if you're excited about exploring nutrition, it is likely that you will find tastier food choices that'll help you keep your body the best it can be. The final thing, the last point, is that when you have, like Chipper and Driver, when you have a healthy body, it's amazing the journey that it can take you on. It's just amazing. Look at these two. I mean, let's face it. 
if we care enough to worry about the health and the happiness of these two chippy chippy Alaskan Huskies, then my goodness, your body, my body, we should care about the health and happiness of ourselves because we only have one body and it's ours. So be good to your body, treat it right. Okay, that's a wrap for today. Thank you for joining us, Chipper. Thank you. My Iditarod dog team is a group of individuals born and raised at my home. I find tremendous satisfaction in racing my dogs. It's not about me winning Iditarod, it's about me breeding, raising, training these Alaskan Husky puppies. All of them who are individuals that have dedication and commitment to give me their absolute best so that we can race the Iditarod. In the end, I'd rather come in second place with my dogs than first place with someone else's. And I have.